Finally, I've prepared the workflow for depth map integration with Flux Tools, a fantastic workflow that gives you extensive control over every detail and setting. You can decide how much your depth map will influence the initial image generation, adjust the resolution of your image, raising or lowering it, and effortlessly produce a high quality image from your depth map. The details are incredible, and in this video, I'll fully explain them to you. Let's go through the details of this workflow together. In depth map control net, the image is processed to detect how close or far objects are from the camera. Objects closer to the camera appear in lighter colors, like white or light gray on the depth map, while objects that are further away appear in darker colors, like dark gray or black. In simpler terms, Close objects to the camera will appear cleaner and more prominent in the final image because the model understands that these parts should stand out more. Farther objects are less noticeable and appear more in the background as they are shown in darker shades on the depth map and are interpreted by the model as background details. So, depth map control net helps make the final image look more three-dimensional, where closer things look sharper and things further away look softer or with fewer details. I really appreciate if you like the video right now and subscribe the channel for my next fantastic tutorials. First, you need to download the main Flux depth model and I've included the download link in the description. Additionally, you'll need the dual clip models and Flux Turbo LoRa model for fastest generation. I won't go over these again in this video. For those who are new and want to learn what Comfy UI and Flux are or how they work, I've included links to foundational videos in the description for beginners. You can watch those, follow the steps, and then return to this video. Okay, let's go to the next part. In this section, you load your image, any image you want, and Flux will create a depth map from it. In this setup, there are four models. And here we have another depth map model for Flux, which you need to download. In this setup, there are four models. I've written their differences in a description. I'm using the width L model to generate a map from my original image, which I'll use to create my final image. To download these models, you don't need to do it manually. As soon as you select a model and hit Q prompt, it will automatically start downloading for the first time. If you face any issues with the download, let me know in the comments and I'll guide you. The second part is resolution. A crucial component of this workflow is resolution. This allows you to determine the quality of your final image. To help you fully understand the concept, I've added a note here, which I'll also explain in detail now. Take a look at the input image. It has a specific dimensions. If I hover over the image, you will see that it's 1344 by 768. Whereas 1344 is the height and 768 is the width. The value you set here in resolution section determines the final width of your output image. For example, if the current image width is 768 and you leave this value as 768, the output image will have the exact same size as the input image. Keep in mind that for horizontal images, it works the other way around. The resolution setting here is interpreted as the final height of the image instead of width. This means the node always uses the smaller dimension to make adjustments. Don't forget that. To test this, after setting the desired value, simply right click here on this section and select this option. Doing so will execute only this part of the workflow, generating the depth map so you can review it. Let me demonstrate. I'll run this and here is the image. Now I right click on the depth map and select open image. Here, if you check the size displayed in the browser tab, it matches exactly with the original input image size, 1344 by 768. Now let's increase the resolution to 1024. I should expect that the map generated will now have a width of 1024 instead of 768, as the value here dictates the final width of the output image. The depth map will adjust accordingly, and so will the final output. Let's run it. I'll right click and execute this part of the workflow. Here is the updated map. At first glance, it might seem similar, but if I right click and select open image, 
you'll see that the size has indeed changed. The width has been updated from 768 to 1024 as I instructed. Based on this width and the original height, the system automatically calculates the proportional height to preserve the aspect ratio of the image. For instance, when I increased the width from 768 to 1024, the height proportionally adjusted to 1792 to maintain the dimensions of the original image. I've explained this clearly in the notes, so feel free to read through it to understand it. So compared to the initial 768, I've manually increased the resolution, resulting in a higher quality output image than the input. You can also do the opposite, reduce the resolution. For example, if you want to lower it from 768, you can do so. The depth map generated will reflect this new resolution. Let me test this by reducing it to 640. So you can see the effect. When the width decreases, the height will also proportionally decrease from 1344. I'll open this in a new tab and compare all three maps side by side. Notice that when I change the width from 768 to 640, the height adjusted from 1344 to 1120. This way you can control the image generation speed. If a speed is critical, you can lower the resolution to get quicker outputs. Once satisfied with the result, you can increase it later, or you can upscale the output image later. If image quality is your priority from the start, you can keep the resolution higher or match it exactly to the input image size. The next section, which is one of the most critical parts, is a prompt. Here you describe what you want in your output. For example, I've written a highly detailed, ultra-realistic image of a 24-year-old Russian woman sitting in a cafe on a sunny day. At the end, I also added, this photo was taken with a Canon camera, which enhances the realism by adding a depth of field effect for a more captivating image. At the top, we have the flux guidance. Similar to Canny, it's best to leave this at 30 but you can experiment with different values if you'd like. The CFG is usually set to 1. If you want the prompt to have a stronger influence and also increase the contrast and saturation of your output image, you can raise this value. However, keep in mind if you set it too high, your image might lose its natural appearance. The steps parameter is straightforward. You determine how many steps the workflow should take to generate your image. Since you have activated Flux Turbo, this value can range between 8 and 12. Without this LoRa enabled, you'd need at least 20 steps, which could slow down image generation. Even with 8 steps, you can get decent results, but I prefer using 12 steps for slightly higher quality. One of the most important parameters is the depth map involvement. This determines how much the depth map participate in the image generation process. For example, if you set it to 40%, the depth map will influence the generation process for the first 40% of the total steps. If your steps are set to, for example, 10, this means the depth map will contribute for the first 4 steps. And the remaining 6 steps will be handled by Flux itself and the depth map will be deactivated. This parameter is crucial because it balances the structure and creativity. If you don't use this setting and run a workflow using the depth map alone, the entire image generation process will strictly adhere to the map, limiting Flux's creative freedom. By involving the map for the initial steps and then letting Flux take over, you ensure both the structure provided by the depth map and the creative enhancements from Flux. For example, if you set 10% depth map involvement, the depth map will only influence one step in a 10-step process, with the remaining steps relying entirely on Flux's creative algorithm. This balance is ideal if you want your image to maintain connection to the depth map while also benefiting from Flux's ability to generate aesthetically pleasing visuals. In conclusion, this settings allows you to control how much influence the depth map has on your final image. By tweaking this value, you can ensure that your image combines the structure of the depth map with the creative flexibility of Flux. 
It's as simple as adjusting this parameter to find the right balance. In this section, you can also add any LoRa you want. By clicking on the Add button, you can incorporate additional LoRa's into your workflow. LoRa here for initial steps and LoRa here for flux process. If you're looking to apply a specific style to your image, this is the perfect place to include your desired LoRa. This workflow is designed to accommodate everything you might need. Once you've completed your setting, simply click on QPrompt to start the image generation process. I won't hit the QPrompt here, but you can already see how well it applies the prompt on the image. Notice how the generated image is of such high quality with excellent details. Here's another image I generated earlier to show you how well it captures fine details.